and this bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South today, those behind a Balclutha boarding house are hoping generous souls in the community will step up to help. A junior Scrabble competition tests the word power of Dunedin school children. And two Dunedin food outlets are putting their toasted sandwiches on the line in a nationwide competition. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. The manager of a boarding house in Balclutha is hoping the community will step in to buy the building. Jamie Tremaine says the former Balclutha Hospital provides accommodation for people new to Balclutha who are struggling to find somewhere to live. Over the last eight years, Cedar Tree Lodge in Balclutha has been a place to stay for about a thousand people, with many of the residents being workers new to the area who stay just for a couple of months while they find permanent accommodation. It is very, very hard to secure a good rental property in the district. Uh, and that's where we come in. People will come here short term, um, um, try their luck at the local industry. And there's a lot of industry here, a lot of employment. Uh, and if they like the job, then they start looking for accommodation. Manager Jamie Tremaine says while he only draws a $30,000 salary, the facility isn't cheap to run and he's spent over half a million dollars upgrading the leased building over the last eight years. Our biggest issue at the moment is, is ongoing compliance, um, insulation, um, uh, uh, compliance, fire compliance, um, everything. Um, so it's definitely not a, a cheap um, venture to operate. Um, it comes at a cost and unfortunately uh, we struggle to meet some of those costs. With so much money already spent on upgrading the facility, Tremaine is hoping community support can be found to purchase the building. Our main objective to secure this building for the long term benefit of the community um, is definitely to take ownership, to buy it out of the lease. Um, and that means if we can buy the building out of the lease, that means um, it will always be here for the community. If we don't buy it out of the lease, it, it will close down. Tremaine says the building could be made freehold by raising $350,000. In Balclutha, the South Today. Invercargill Mayor Sir Tim Shadbolt surprised councillors at a meeting by asking what would happen if he resigned. Multiple sources have confirmed the question came during the non-public section of a committee meeting early last week. The Mayor has previously said he has no intention of quitting prematurely, despite criticism mounting in the past year surrounding his ability to lead. Sir Tim has responded by maintaining he's still the best person for the job. In a recent interview, he cited a major health event as the only thing that would stop him from running again. The next round of local body elections will be in 15 months. A host of Dunedin pupils have put their internal lexicons to the test at a long-running primary school Scrabble competition. The event's convener says English usage has changed in the competition's 20 years, but she feels language is simply different, not necessarily worse. Furious concentration, finding the highest scoring word at the annual Scrabble for Fun competition, which the convener says has been going for 20 years. So it started off um, with 60 kids from the schools, and yet the following year it was 120, and it was 120 for the next 10 years. And then it sort of phased off a little bit, but the interest is still there. But the beauty is, for this year, is new schools have come into it that haven't played in this competition before. Ruth Groffman says English usage has changed considerably over the two decades the event has been running. But she doesn't think technology has degraded the language, saying it's just different. There's more and more words in general usage, and there's a lot more shortened words in general usage. 
for example, ad instead of advertisement. Pupils from six schools across Greater Dunedin made the trek to the Dunedin Public Library for the morning's event. Learning Support Coordinator and East Society School parent Annabelle Hammond says playing with words and being immersed in written and spoken language will help all learners. Everyone has got potential to learn and achieve. It's whether we look at the, the student as a deficit model or through the eyes of there's nothing wrong with the students. What, what, what are we doing? How can we get every student to achieve? Hammond says educational activities like this can help address New Zealand's slipping standards in literacy and numeracy. As the latest statistics show, Aotearoa slipping behind other countries. Eight-year-old Opoho school pupil Tilly Sweetman played 10-year-old Lucas Donovan from Port Chalmers School, with Tilly beating Lucas. Both junior wordsmiths have advice for others thinking of taking up the tiles. So, with writing, I didn't know that you could spell two letters, letter words like what you could do on these sheets. So now I'm probably going to be using these in more spelling and writing prompts. I haven't done it before and I would recommend it for friends because it is quite fun playing against other kids from different schools. The children compete in teams for a shield which goes to the winning school until it's up for grabs next year. And Ruth Groffman says from this event, players can go on to compete at national and international levels, including at the Junior World Scrabble Championships. In Dunedin, the South Today. The industry met with Tourism Minister Stuart Nash yesterday, but says, oh, sorry, there we go, with Stuart Mash, Nash yesterday, but says it will also need the support of other government departments to bring cruise ships back. The international cruise ship industry was grounded in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Cruise Association Chief Executive Kevin O'Sullivan says Minister Nash was most sympathetic and offered some direct support through his Cabinet colleagues. He says the planning will take time and the industry isn't expecting to see another cruise season before 2023. More than 120 toasties from around the country have been judged, with 12 selected to continue through to the finals. Two are from Dunedin Eateries. Neither of the two Dunedin finalists in the Great New Zealand Toasty Takeover feature an ounce of meat. Dunedin food outlet Hungry Hobos is one of two in the city with a sandwich selected in a nationwide toasted sandwich competition. Hobos owner Romeo Dowling Mitchell says this year's recipe came from home. When I actually stole it off my girlfriend, she was making it at home. She uh, would, I sort of turned my nose up at it first when I came home. She's like, I made pulled carrots, they taste just like pulled pork. And I was like, oh, here, here we go again. Um, but it was actually, I was really surprised. The establishment is no stranger to the competition, having won it last year with a meatloaf creation. Dowling Mitchell says the toasty world is ready for a more experimental sandwich. I figured like vegetarian food sort of come a long way in the last few years, and this year I was like, oh, well, you know, let's try and do something with pulled carrots. Um, something a little bit, hopefully not too different for the judges, but um, I think people are ready for it. He says part of the prize for winning the competition last year was a year's supply of pickles, which led them to using even more pickles and helped in the creation of this year's entry. So that actually sort of inspired this year's sandwich because I started, like I told the staff, like help yourself, you know, chuck any pickles, like they get a free sandwich every shift they work. Um, so they started shoving pickles um, all over their sandwiches and trying different things and the one that they all were like was the best with these um, McClure's pickles were, was the pulled carrot. The competition rules are that all sandwiches must be toasted between two slices of bread and able to be eaten by hand. Morning Magpie in Dunedin's Stewart Street is a first time entrant and are entering their vegan toasted sandwich which features miso mayonnaise, house walnut pesto, pepper rocket, miso portobello mushrooms, house kimchi and pickles on pan-fried organic sourdough. And the cafe says it's popular with vegan and carnivorous customers alike. The winner of the competition is set to be announced on July 30th. In Dunedin, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, we have the latest on a Dunedin golf club which has lost nearly a century of history in a fire. And we have this week's edition of Football Chat, so catch this and more.
after the break. maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Welcome back. Dunedin's Balnaz Golf Club says that nearly 100 years of history has been lost when its club rooms burnt down to the ground on Tuesday night. Flames tore through the clubhouse, leaving behind only a shell of the building. The club says the building was filled with memorabilia, including team photos from across the years and honours boards. The club rooms were covered by insurance and the club will hold a meeting to discuss how to continue in the short term. It is still not known what caused the fire. In this week's episode of Football Chat, Matt Kelly and Rahan Ali discuss with two players how recent games have been for local teams. Uh, hello and welcome to this week's edition of Football Chat where Rahan and I will be uh, talking all things football and absolutely anything that comes our way. Yep, welcome to the show. You're looking very dapper today, uh, Matthew. Thank you, Rahan. 
So, Michaela, let's start with you. You played Roslyn in the weekend. Yep. Give us a, a brief rundown of, of what happened there. Well, we got there. The weather was pretty shocking. You couldn't really see too much in front of you. But I think, you know, we had lots of opportunities. We created so many opportunities. And we welcomed Erin Dickey back to the club. And she works really well with Reagan Potter up the front. And, you know, just creating those opportunities and having so many chances. And then Lauren Arnold, you know, came out of nowhere and scored a goal, which was absolutely amazing. And really lifts the spirit of the team. So, nice. Yeah. Uh, now, Renee Bacon. She's been an absolute thorn in your side this year, hasn't she? She's got yep. 11 goals in three games. Yep. How difficult has she been to play against and what can you try and do to stop her? Well, yeah, she reads the game really well and, you know, her fast pace just creates opportunities for her and her teammates. So, you know, that we try and stick at least someone on her, like, per game kind of thing. But, you know, we can't always, you know, catch her and stuff like that. She is and quick, isn't she? She is Great running very, style. Yeah. very fast. Mm. But, you know, also we have Kate McBeth who scored, you know, three goals in the week prior, so we also had to keep our defence on her as well. So. Alright, well now on to you Tim, welcome to the show. You <laughs> played nice. Queenstown on the turf with another uh, comfortable 5-1 win, that's two in a row for you. In Wantanabe, uh, continued his goal scoring form, scored a, a hat-trick of onions. Uh, talk us through what happened there. Uh, to be honest, we scored lots of goals and they didn't score many. Yeah. Um, like, in Wantanabe, I'm surprised he's not back at the Phoenix like he was when he was younger. Um, he's just yeah, a ball playing machine, scores goals, gets in spaces. Um, I think Aidan Barbarian will be uh, having a tough training on Thursday night. I don't know whether he'll get in the starting lineup this week uh, after N's performances the last couple of weeks when Aidan's been on holiday. Um, but honestly, the Queenstown had Willem. He was, he was a quality player, but I think player, yeah. it sort of displayed that you can't win a game with just one player. Uh, you, need a, you need a full 11. And that's what Varsity had. Actually, we had 12 players. Oh. No, no one more. <laughs> no um, subs. Just no subs. subs. We actually, at one point, we had 10. Yeah, oh. thanks to Ben O'Farrell. Mm, yeah, yeah. we actually talk us through that. Here's, he got sent off, didn't he? Yeah, he's lost his head. Mm. Nice. It's not good. Um, he's nah, a dirty he, player, isn't he? He was having a few tussles with some of the boys uh, in the game from Queenstown. Um, they were doing him, he was doing them. And one guy, I think, came through and maybe stood on his foot or something. And just he saw fire and went through the next challenge. Lost his head. Uh, to be honest, the challenge wasn't terrible, but his intent was pretty bad. And so I would have given a yellow, but I'm not the referee. Lindsay is. Uh, and so great referee. Got a red, great referee. Yeah. Back to the hills, we do. Absolutely. We love Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. So Lin it, was it was silly from being fair, especially with Roslyn this week. Silly man. Yeah, mm. that is. So he's gone and actually gone hiking. Gone um, caving instead. He's, he's I gone think to that was, head, has he? I yeah. think <laughs> potentially before the game he was thinking about caving yeah. and hiking. Uh, and yeah, now he's got that. So well done. So Michaela, thanks for having thanks for coming in. It's been great to have you. No Tim, you've been here. Yep. Yep. You <laughs> uh, and a final thanks to you, Rahan. And thank you, uh, Matt, and to our viewers, thanks for tuning in. And we do hope to see you next week. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Still to come on the South today. Social media posts turn the spotlight on winter grazing in Southland once again. And we take a look at tomorrow's weather for you. So see you after the break. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Thanks for staying with us. Winter grazing in Southland is once again in the spotlight following posts on social media. Photos of weather-worn Southland farms showing muddy water running off from farm paddocks and flowing into the Edgington River were posted on Facebook on Monday. The topic was discussed at an Environment Southland meeting yesterday. Some councillors say there is a lack of understanding about Southland farms and wintering practices from some North Island farmers. Others say the photographs are of an event that happens sporadically. Federated Farmers Jerry Executives visited the region last week to see what was happening. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Those behind a Balclutha boarding house are hoping generous souls in the community will step up to help in their time of need. A junior Scrabble competition tests the word power of Dunedin school children who could end up representing the country. And two Dunedin food outlets are putting their toasted sandwiches on the line in a nationwide competition and both are meat free. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Barry. How Hello, are you Mel. Doing? Well, that looked a bit tasty, didn't it? Just, I know. I was, um, my stomach was starting to rumble. Where's the appetite for tea tonight? So, yeah. um, very good. Anyway, on more important matters, Professor uh, David Murdoch has been appointed the new Target University Vice Chancellor. Uh, so, Professor Murdoch is currently Dean and Head of the University of Otago campus in Christchurch. Uh, and of course, he replaces Professor Harleen Hain, who moved to Perth earlier this year. Just joking, that's what uh, Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt uh, is saying about uh, the question he posed regarding early retirement. Uh, so we have more on that story tomorrow. Uh, and uh, there's been unprecedented demand for f student flats in uh, for next year. So um, after domestic enrolments uh, at the uni and Polytech uh, have skyrocketed. So the demand for flats is uh, alive and well at the moment. So uh, you've got to get in early, clearly. So that's putting demand on, on those spaces. So uh, it's like the student years of old. <laughs> Was it always like that, was yeah, it? Yeah, like they always the used to of the middle of the year. Yeah, we yeah. were looking for flats for the next year. So yep. there you go, it's, uh, it's back again. The a medical weight loss device that gained international condemnation uh, this week is getting a redesign. Uh, so Professor Paul Brunton said yesterday there had been hurtful feedback 
uh, about the device, but uh, he did not want to d dwell on the negatives. On a sporting note, uh, we have a sports lift out tomorrow, so lots of action in there, lots of club rugby and, and a variety of other things, but we also focus on the All Blacks ahead of their first test match of the season, so that's against Tonga on Saturday, and there are four new caps in that side. Exciting stuff. Go the All Blacks, and you can catch all of that in tomorrow's ODT. And now it's time for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Starting with today's southern view of Dunedin's historic railway station bathed in sunlight. Looking at the situation, some more days of fine weather expected in the southern districts as an anti-cyclone directs light westerly airflow over the region. Expect some heavy frost inland but some cloud at times along the coast. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, it's a mixed bag here with 13 degrees in grey mouth with a bit of cloud. Westport is also 13 degrees but with scattered showers. Moving to the northeast, it's a sunny winter's day for all in this region with 14 degrees in Nelson and Blenheim. And it's mostly sunny in Canterbury as well, with some areas seeing a bit of cloud. Kaikoura will see a clear blue sky day with 12 degrees, while Christchurch and Ashburton reach a high of 11 degrees with partial cloud. Moving to the southern towns, looking at light winds and fine conditions for all here, with 10 degrees for the Catlins, Belclutha, Lumsden and Gore. Over to the Central Lakes area, it's light winds and fine conditions for all in this region also with 7 degrees in Queenstown, 8 degrees in Wanaka and 10 degrees for both Alexandra and Tiana. Moving to the northern towns along the coast, expect light winds and fine conditions with 12 degrees in Timaru and 11 degrees in Aomaru. And it's the same moving inland to Twazu and Amarama with fine weather, light winds and a high of 10 degrees. In Dunedin, fine and cold tonight with a low of 1. Fine and often sunny tomorrow and Saturday but some cloud sneaks in at times. Cool temperatures with light variable winds and light frosts possible at night. Friday sees a high of 11 and a low of 1 and it's similar on Saturday with a high of 11 and a low of 2 degrees. And in Invercargill, mostly cloudy tonight with a low of 3. Fine tomorrow and Saturday with a mix of sunny periods and some cloud. Moderate westerlies and cool temperatures. Friday sees a high of 11 and a low of 3 and it's slightly higher on Saturday with a high of 12 and a low of 4. And that's all for our news for this Thursday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.